Good morning and thank you for joining us today. Whether it's your first time with us or you are a regular viewer, you're welcome to join in with our worship today. Yeah, thank you. And um, as we come into our time of worship, um, I want to begin by saying, did you uh, notice the verse uh, at the end of the introductory song, which uh, is a quote of Jesus uh, speaking to his disciples and saying, uh, where two or three of his followers gather in his name, uh, he is among them. And uh, we come to declare that truth this morning, uh, that as we gather in the name of Jesus, that he is with us. And we think about him being with us in in um, a very real way. It's not. It's something that we truly believe that Jesus is with us. Uh, you may notice this hedge behind me, and I've done some reflections as I've been uh, looking over the top of the hedge, uh, looking at the sun going down, and and I've seen some amazing uh, pictures uh, over the last um, couple of weeks of some glorious sunsets, and and uh, during the week as well, uh, somebody put up. Uh, the picture of the moon and uh, I've been reflecting on the, the moon and the stars and how the God of creation uh, came into this world in the person of Jesus Christ to demonstrate his love for all of his people and the peoples of this world to think of what he has done for the peoples of this world through the death of Jesus Christ on the cross so as we come uh, to worship this morning one of the songs that is included uh, is um, being requested by Margaret and Neil uh, who are not able to uh, join us online uh, they have difficulty with their uh, computer um, but hopefully they'll be able to watch this on DVD at some point and they've uh, requested uh, the song How Great Thou Art uh, which is based on uh, the words of Psalm 8 and so as we come to our time of worship this morning I'm going to read to you the words of Psalm 8 and then I'm going to leave a moment of reflection to think and ponder on how the God of creation came into uh, into uh, this world and walked with the disciples and spoke those words that where two or three gather, I am among them. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned them with glory and honour. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet. All flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swims the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Let us take a minute or two to reflect on these words. What spoke to you? What stood out? What did you notice? Father God, as we come into worship this morning, help us to grasp something of the depth of the love that you have for us. A love that sent your Son into the world, not to condemn it, but to save it. Lord, as we consider that question of the Psalmist, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, 
or are human beings that you care for them. Help us to truly grasp that. Help us to grasp how much you love us. Help us to experience your presence with us, Lord. Lord, as we lift up our worship this morning, would you speak to us through our prayers and through the reading of your word, through the moments of silence that we have, and through the words of the worship that we sing. Lord, would you build us up, encourage us and strengthen us through all that happens this morning. Sustain us in the days ahead, we pray. In Jesus' name, Amen.
do not fear the final night, for death will be the door to life. You take my hand and lead me through, for all my ways are known to you. And all What a great inspiring song and I particularly like the lyrics of uh, uh, that say uh, open up my eyes that I may see that I might become a way aware of the uh, ways that you have uh, made for me uh, also open my eyes that I may see uh, again that I might be aware of your presence Lord uh, with me uh, leading and guiding me that you walk with me um, our reading today is kind of going to reflect that this uh, God making ways and having plans and purposes for our lives and uh, uh, Trudy's going to read those just now uh, the first one is from uh, Genesis and, and the second one is from Isaiah our first reading this morning is from Genesis the book of beginnings chapter 19 verses 12 to 26 the two men said to Lot, Do you have anyone else here, sons-in-law, sons or daughters, or anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out of here, because we are going to destroy this place. The outcry to the Lord against its people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law, who were pledged to marry his daughters. He said, Hurry and get out of this place because the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his sons-in-law thought he was joking. With the coming of dawn, the angels urged Lot, saying, Hurry, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away when the city is punished. When he hesitated, the men grasped his hand and the hands of his wife and of his two daughters and led them safely out of the city the Lord was merciful to them. As soon as they had brought them out, one of them said, Flee for your lives, don't look back, and don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains, or you will be swept away. But Lot said to them, No, my lords, please. Your servant has found favour in your eyes, and you have shown great kindness to me in sparing my life. But I can't flee to the mountains. This disaster will overtake me, and I'll die. Look, here is a town near enough to run to, and it is small. Let me flee to it. It is very small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared. He said to him, Very well, I will grant this request too. I will not overthrow the town you speak of, 
but flee there quickly, because I cannot do anything until you reach it. That is why the town was called Zoar. By the time Lot reached Zoar, the sun had risen over the land. Then the Lord rained down burning soul fire on Sodom and Gomorrah, from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus he overthrew those cities and the entire plain, destroying all those living in the cities and also the vegetation in the land. But Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Our second reading this morning is from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Chapter 43 verses 18 to 21. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honour me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Thank you, Trudy. Um, our um, speakers, guest speakers this morning have been with us before. It's Alex and Heather um, from Romania. Uh, you'll be glad to know that they're no longer in their hotel room under quarantine, uh, but have been able to return home. And so they're going to bring us our message this morning. Good morning, and we send you blessings here from the church in Poyana, Romania. We hope that you're all well and that you're coping okay with this lockdown situation. And if you're not, pick up the phone, talk to somebody, uh, just say to somebody, I'm really, really struggling and somebody can talk to you and pray with you. I wonder if you've ever thought that sometimes things trigger off memories in your mind. For me, um, every time I smell some baking in the oven, it always takes me back to my granny's kitchen and she was the one who taught me how to bake and how to do a lot of cooking and I always remember that and it takes me straight back to her kitchen when I was a little girl. Also music, I absolutely love music, all different types of music, all different styles of music and sometimes when I hear on the radio or a song on the television it will take me back to that time, maybe in my childhood, as a teenager, as a young adult. These memories are wonderful and they're comforting and they're good. But sometimes things happen to us in our lives that maybe aren't, be, haven't been so good. And these are the things that we remember. And as soon as something happens, we are transported back to that time. That's not also always a good thing because we have to be able to keep moving forward. So we don't want things to keep us in the past, but enabling us to move forward. So if you want a message, a title for our message today, it's Don't Look Back. Abraham was Lot's uncle and he travelled around the country with both their families, all their servants, their animals. But during this time there had been a famine and the land wasn't enough to support both families. So they decided to split and separate, but they'd done so in good terms. Lot chose the most beautiful part of the land. There was field and he took his family to live there. He settled there in Sodom and Gomorrah because it was beautiful but it was also full of evil and perversion. Lot saw all of this but stayed there with his family. How many times have you seen something that looks good on the outside but is not very good on the inside? How many times have you seen a cake, I'm bringing in cakes again, that looks absolutely beautiful but then you go to taste it and it tastes horrible, it's too sweet, it tastes sour, it's whatever, and you're disappointed, aren't you? Sometimes you see people on social media, on Instagram, on Facebook, all these celebrities who have these wonderful, wonderful lives and you just think, well, I can't even compete with that. Maybe a relationship, a relationship maybe on the outside looks good, but it's not on the inside behind closed doors. Lot saw the evil that was around him in Sodom and he's chose to stay there with his family. Maybe something looks good on the outside, but we should always ask God for guidance and direction. We should always ask God if something is in his will 
or our desire, a relationship, a work situation, a house, maybe we need to move house or something, our children, how many children are we going to have, all those sorts of things we need to lead, ask God to lead us in our families. Have you ever been directed by God to do something that you just don't fully understand? We lived in Glasgow, we were saved in this church, we were baptised in this church and then God moved us to Wales for a job and then he moved us again to Romania to work with street children and we now pastor a small village church. My situation was one where I had to listen to God and I had to hear confirmation upon confirmation. From us being told we would move to Romania to live here, it took seven years for it actually to happen. And I had to do that because I would bring in my family. It was a family calling, not my personal calling. We take up our passage today from Genesis 19.12, which was read from earlier on. And we see that Lot and his family were told to leave Sodom and Gomorrah because it was going to be destroyed, but couldn't be until they left. In the previous chapter, chapter 18, we read that Abraham who was, who was praying for the righteous in Sodom and Gomorrah and asking God if he could, would still destroy it if he could find 50 righteous people. And God said he would not destroy it if he could find 50 righteous people. Then Abraham asked him, what if you can find 45 righteous people? And God said, I will not destroy it. Then he goes down to 40 and the same answer, I will not destroy it. Then he goes down to 20 people and asks God, if you find 20 righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah, will you, will you dis not destroy it? And God said, no, I won't destroy it. Then he goes down to 10 and he says the same thing to God. If there are 10 righteous people in Sodom, will you save it and not destroy it? And God said, I will not destroy it. Then Abraham returned to his place. Lot and his family were told to leave Sodom and Gomorrah and they got up and left. Sometimes God will destroy or close a situation in our lives, an opportunity maybe that's come along, a business, land, a job, a relationship or something God has told you not to do. The danger is that we think we know best and try to hold on to the bits that we think are good. In Samuel 15, God commanded Saul to destroy the Amalekites and not to keep anything for himself. But he did. Saul kept what he thought was valuable, which had lasting consequences in his life. We cannot take what God has told us to kill into the next season. When God tells us to do something, he is testing the character of our hearts. God wants to know if we are willing to listen to him and follow him or listen to the people of this world. Don't be stubborn and hold on to things that are not right. Saul failed and kept the valuables. Who do you value most in your life, God or the opinions of people? When we carry the things God told us not to, then it becomes heavy baggage. And we know what that feels like. Everywhere we go, we have to carry this heavy baggage around with us. Don't carry the baggage into the next season. God wants us to be completely free from the past and to release our faith into the future. His future for us is much better than the future we can make for ourselves. God has given you a task to do and he will equip you and lead you when you ask, listen to him and ask him for his help. God wants his best for you. Don't look back. Don't pick up again what God has taken from you. Disobedience will keep you stagnant. The heart of Lot's wife stayed in Sodom. She was physically moving forward. She was leaving with her family, but her heart was still there. Her family were moving into a new season and had to leave the past behind and they were told not to look back. But Lot's wife did and she became a pillar of salt. 
It was a reflection of her heart. She was stuck in disobedience. When we focus on our past, our hearts become stunted and we cannot grow further with God. We can become bitter and full of unforgiveness. Our past can become like an idol for us and then it's difficult to hear from God because we put the idol before we put God. Do you have something in your life that you are putting before God? Maybe you are hurt or you've been in pain. Maybe you are bitter and part of your heart has become like a pillar of salt. Maybe you were hurt and refused to love again. We need to ask God to heal our hearts completely. We need to ask him to forgive us and we need to ask that we are able to forgive others. So, what does that mean for us as individuals today? It means freedom, it means liberty and it means blessings for each one of us. Yes, we are human and make mistakes all the time. But what should we do when that happens? Repent and move on. Don't make your past bigger than what it was. Don't think your sin is too big that God can't forgive you because he can. You are never too old. You are never too young to repent and follow God. From you. If there's something in your past that is trying to haunt you and prevent you from moving on. Is that the question for you today? Is there something in your life today that you need to lay down or something from the past that you need to ask God to sort out in your lives? God will reach you, teach you and lead you into a new season. It's time to move forward. God has been bringing some verses to us as a family for most of this year, but particularly in the past few weeks and months. And I'd just like to read them. It's Isaiah 43 from verse 18 to 21. Don't forget all it. It's nothing compared to what I'm going to do. For I'm going to do something new. See, I've already begun. Do not you see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. The wild animals in the fields will thank me. The jackals and owls too. For giving them water in the desert. Yes, I will make rivers in the dry wasteland, so my chosen people can be refreshed. I have made Israel for myself, and they will someday honour me before the whole world. We've heard a lot today about the past, and we all have a past. But I can't change yesterday. I can change today, and I can prepare for tomorrow. But God has a future for each and every one of us. Some of you that may be watching this will know my past. And you'll know I wasn't on a good road. God changed my path and he set me on a road that has now got me as pastoring a church. That was not the case when you first knew me, especially people that have been there for years like Neil and Jean. They would remember the Alex then. So prepare yourself to walk forward. You can use your experience in God's ways and he will guide you on what to do, where to go, what to say and how to react to situations that you face every day. So please listen to God and then act upon his guidance, not your own. When these times are over, uh, things are going to be very different. Things are going to be very different in workplaces. They're going to be very different in our family lives. Hopefully they'll be the way they are as in communicating with one another more through video, through telephone, through all of these things rather than texting and things like that. But church is going to be different as well. It's been absolutely amazing for us particularly. It's been amazing to be able to keep in touch with um, churches through this, through technology and being able to join in Zoom prayer meetings and, and things like that we've never been able to do before. But we have lots of people out there who are searching for God at this time. People who have started to pray that have never prayed before. People who have started to search and see, seek something that wants to fill that gap in them and that is God. So we need to be prepared as a church to possibly do things different, to not hang on to traditions from the past, not to hang on to things that we, we do because we've always done it, but be there for people who are ready to and hungry to find God. 
Yes, it's difficult times, but what an amazing time to evangelise the people at home who are struggling, who are lonely. And we need to be ready as a church to minister to them, to disciple them and to show them the way to Jesus. We hope that you have a blessed day. We hope you have a blessed week and we hope that one day soon this will all be over and uh, but we will still keep in touch in this way. We thank you and God bless you all. God bless you all. Bye bye. Bye. Well, thank you, uh, Alex and Heather, for that message uh, once more, and um, certainly given us a lot to think about, and in particular, uh, how God is speaking into our lives, how um, if we spend time in prayer, uh, asking God uh, for the ways that he has made for us, uh, the path and direction that he wants us to take in life, uh, that uh, when we listen, that we, um, we do so believing that he will respond and that he will lead and guide us that the ways the plans and purposes that he has for us he will make uh, clear to us and um, we're now going to enter with that in mind into a time of prayer and we're going to have a time of prayer that are led by other people who have uh, sent prayers in as requested uh, but i'm going to allow a moment or two within that time of prayer uh, for you perhaps to ask that question god how are you leading me uh, in this time of lockdown what what is it lord that you want me to be aware of what is it that you want my op uh, to open my eyes to see uh, to become aware of to become aware of my uh, relationship with you uh, and perhaps um, to consider my relationship with other people in this world uh, how I live my life and uh, what things are of value and what's important and Lord how I could honor and glorify you so let us now come and reflect upon those things as we come into this time of prayer Heavenly Father, we thank you for being with us during this time of lockdown. Thank you that although we are physically separated from one another, we can still pray and worship and enjoy fellowship together. And although we may find this way of holding services strange and perhaps difficult, we thank you that we know this is only temporary, that a time will come when we will be able to be back in our church buildings and see one another face to face. So today, Father, we pray for those who are meeting in their homes, not because of a fear of a virus, but because of the fear of their government, fear of their neighbours, and perhaps even fear of other family members. We pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters, wherever they may be in the world. We pray that you would watch over them. We pray that you would protect them. And we pray that you would strengthen their faith that you would grant them these blessings even in the midst of persecution. We pray that they would be encouraged to know that those of us who enjoy the freedom of worshipping you openly and publicly continue to pray for them and that they are not forgotten. Help us to see our circumstances not as a burden but as an opportunity for blessing. We thank you that there are reports that more people than ever are now watching online services, that more people than ever are praying. So we pray that you would help us not only to find new ways to worship you in the current circumstances, but that you would help us as your people to continue to find new and creative ways to share our worship with others, and in doing so encourage others and bring others to faith in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father God, we come before you today as a people in crisis. All around us we see the effects of this dreadful virus. Yet we are told that we must trust you as you are in control. At times like this, we need to look to the cross even more than ever and know that the one who can send his only begotten Son to perish for the sins of mankind and then raise him from the dead is mightier than any virus or man-made thing. We thank you that we opened our eyes today and can gather together, even though it may be virtually we gather, as your people to worship you with our praise and thanksgiving. In these strange and ever-changing times, 
You are the one constant in our world, the always present, never changing Almighty God, who holds us and keeps us as we face times of uncertainty in our lives. We come to pray for those suffering loss at this time. There are many types of loss in our lives, as people have lost jobs due to the lockdown and the effect it is having on the economy. However, the most keenly felt loss is the loss of a loved one, which is hard at any time, but especially now, as many cannot gather together to say their final goodbyes. Some will be left alone as their companion in life has been taken from them, and they face what they will see as a lonely future. Loneliness is something that is affecting many at this time as they live on their own and there are no visits allowed, so they are isolated in what they see as a busy world. Father, this reminds us of the time Jesus spent on the cross, lonely and isolated from you, abandoned by most of his followers and yet willing to stay on the cross until he could utter those words which reassure us of our salvation and of our sins being dealt with when he said, it is finished. We thank you that you accepted his sacrifice on our behalf, meaning that we are free and can look forward to eternal life when we call upon the name that is above every other name, Jesus Christ. So Father, help us at this time not to be like the Israelite people when they saw the Red Sea and they told Moses they would rather go back to Egypt and live under Pharaoh's rule rather than face the uncertainty of what they saw as bleak desert. But lift our heads, open our eyes and let us see the possibilities of what you can do. Our buildings may be closed, but we can still feel your presence with us as we gather as brothers and sisters in the spirit to worship. We thank you that you are still at work in this world even during this pandemic. So just help us to keep looking up to you. We come and bring our worries and concerns to you at this time and prayerfully ask that you lift them from us as we seek to praise and worship you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Our loving Heavenly Father, Thank you that we can come confidently into your presence because of Jesus. His sacrifice and giving of his life on that cross makes us righteous in your sight. Thank you that you delight in the prayers and petitions of your children. In Psalm 116 verse 2 it says, Because he bends down to listen, I will pray as long as I have breath. As a group of your people, thank you that we can approach you in many ways, sometimes singing your praises, reading your word, or just sitting and being still. Acknowledging that we need you even if sometimes we cannot put it into words. It pleases you that we have taken time out to seek you. I would like to pray especially at this time for people who are living on their own. It can be so lonely and can stir up so many different emotions. I thank you for your many promises that you will never leave us or forsake us and that you are our helper and provider. Help us to cling to these promises and truly believe them, not just in our heads but in our hearts. I pray for wisdom for our government as they plan our exit strategy for leaving lockdown in areas such as businesses, schools, socialising etc. Also to find a vaccine quickly. I pray, pray for families rebuilding their lives, often in very sad circumstances, that they may know your peace and comfort. Thank you also for our wonderful NHS staff and carers. I pray that in spite of the many deaths they have seen, there will have been miracles along the way to encourage them. Thank you God that you are the God of the impossible and are able to bring good out of bad and light out of darkness. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for those that shared their prayers this morning. Um, it was lovely to hear what's on your heart. And our next song of worship this morning will be Jesus, God's Righteousness Revealed, which talks about how the righteousness, righteousness of God is revealed in the person of Jesus Christ, who came into our world as a demonstration of God's love for us and the world. Jesus, God's righteousness revealed. The Son of Man, the Son of God, His kingdom comes. Jesus, redemption sacrifice. once again this morning and it's been nice to be filming outside and I hope you can hear the birds like we can. Uh, we're coming to the end of our service now and we will be finishing with the grace. Yes let us say the, the grace together. May, May the, the grace, grace of, of the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the love, love of God and, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with you all now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Yes it's uh, been great to have you with us and uh, You'll be glad to know that I'm managing to get through uh, the list of jobs that I have to do because of uh, lockdown, uh, although they seem to be never ending. As I knock one or two off uh, the top of the list, uh, more seem to appear at the bottom. Uh, but um, I'm sure I will eventually get through them. Uh, now as we uh, close uh, for today, um, we're going to have our benediction uh, from Jean uh, Robinson, uh, who is going to bring us a prayer to close our service today. 
So we will see you at Trudy. You normally see that bit, don't you? See you again next week. Hope Bye. You can join us. Bye. <laughs>